another video today it is me and Daisy dog bringing in the mojo today and we are at the beautiful Bartlett Lake as you can probably tell by my crusty face it's a little cooler today I thought I'd come out here and show you guys how to catch fish when the bite is really really tough we got post frontal conditions today it's the coldest day of the week we had a big storm come in last night it was snowing on the northern side of Arizona the water temps dropped significantly I mean we're looking at I think we're looking at 65 degree water temps right now. Um, it's a Monday, so it's right after the pressure of the weekend. So it's just like the worst conditions that you can have uh, piled into one day. So uh, I, fi I figured what better day to come out here and film this video than, than, than today. So so here we are, brought Daisy Dog. We're gonna see if we can catch some fish. Just caught one on the old Ned Rig, old trusty. So broke the ice there. But uh, I hope you guys can kind of learn something from this video. I mean, I'm just gonna give you my honest opinions on, on how to catch fish here in the state. It's gonna be a short, sweet video. Uh, <laughs> Daisy, you ready catching? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna get you on a chesty, and uh, we're gonna see what we can catch today. Actually, first, I'm gonna show you what I got tied on. All right, so I do have a jig tied on here. I got a little Carolina rig tied on right there. This one is to be determined. I don't know what I'm gonna put on this one yet. I got the Ned rig rigged up here, just a green pumpkin Ned rig. This one's gonna be a deeper crankbait when I get that one rigged up, and then I got a medium diving crankbait there. So all good lures to be throwing. The wind is kind of in and out. So I'll just change up lures based on what the fish are trying to tell me. So far I caught one on the Ned rig within the first maybe 20 minutes of fishing. So that's a good sign. Let's uh, let's put some more fish in the boat. Daisy, anything you want to say? <laughs> I agree. I'll get you guys on the chesty and let's get to fishing. Guys, there's our first fish of the day. Little dude, really little guy. Oh, first fish of the day. Tiny little dude. Holy smokes. So, well, there's little guys down there. That's great. Daisy, pretty cool, huh? Give him a lick. Not too small. Okay, well, there's our, uh, our first fish there. Oh, that's a better one, guys. Typical Bartlett fish on the jig. Hey, okay. Okay, something's going on here. Third cast with the jig, freaking got thumped up there in the mud flat. Yep, his fins are all up in that mud, guys. They're sitting belly in it. Ooh, there we go, Daisy. <laughs> the dump, the dump, dump, dumped it on the jig. That's a fun right there. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, he's coming up and ate it. Oh, on the ball oh, is reeling it in. Back to back, baby. Back to back. Little dudes, but we're literally reeling up the jig. That's sick. All right, so there's fish over here. See, a lot of guys, when I was watching them come through here, they came through and they're throwing a spinner bait or crank bait. Sometimes you just slow it down in the spots, you get better bites. I'm sure, these fish have seen a lot of little crank baits and all kinds of stuff over here. I don't know how many people are really slowing it down through here. All right. Woo, it's blowing. 26 feet of water, I got shad below me here. This is a pretty good spot usually, so we're gonna figure out what's going on. Make one cast up to the point. When you're fishing in days like this where it's post frontal, it's cold, you got some wind, you just wanna fish real obvious main lake points these fish are going to push out they're going to find areas where there's shallow to deep water access that's where the shad is going so those fish are going to follow so you're really just looking for those real obvious main lake points um and then marking structure i usually like fishing around 20 feet or so uh, when it starts to get colder and i've caught them all the way down to 60 70 foot so you just gotta let the gotta let the fish tell you where, where they want you rule number one though find the shad See 24 feet here, which is a pretty good, 
pretty good depth to be in. So they got a bunch of shad below me here. A couple good marks going through it. There we go, guys. Oh, there we go. Little dude, little guy. Just a little guy, but he's, man, he's pulling. Not too bad. Oh, there we go. A little Bartlett chunker on the Ned rig. Okay. Right there, guys, that's the Ned rig that I'm throwing. So it's just a little Z-Man Ned rig with a custom jig head by my boy, Jay Parks. Two fish on the Ned rig, two fish on the jig. Literally just dragging it through some bushes down there. So much shad right here, but there's just like nothing on it. It's weird. There we go. Playing hard to get. Hey man, these guys are fighters. Oh, it's not a bad one either. There we go. Best one of the day, probably. It's not too bad. Hooked in the roof of the mouth. I'm like, man, I know there's some freaking fish down there. I can see him chasing shad down there. I just, shoot, man. They just didn't want to come up and hang out. There you go, buddy. Thank you. The only thing different there is I'm throwing a drop shot. Like, man, dude, I'm seeing them on the graph. And I can see arches, but man, I can't. I mean, anytime I drop down to them, it's like, no, no, no. Yep, there's another one. Yep. All I had to do is flip it over to the drop shot, I guess. Another good, decent one, too. Staying down. <laughs> they just have shoulders on them. Oh, get over here. Get over here. Oh, it's a good fish. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. Found her. It's a good fish, Daisy. About the same size as the last one there. Just fight her, man. Ah, there we go. There we go. Not a bad one out here in these tough conditions. What do you think, Daisy? Oh, yeah? He's a good one? He's a good one? Okay. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Woo! Oh, mean. That's the only difference. I just wasn't throwing the drop shot earlier. Oh, I have such a love-hate relationship with that bait. Okay, a little update. Figuring things out right now. I threw the Carolina rig, I threw a jig. I was about to throw a crankbait. I'm seeing fish all over the graph and I can see them arcing through it. So I know there's fish down there, but I just couldn't get them to bite anything. I'm like, well, I'll tie on a drop shot real quick, get it elevated off the bottom. And uh, within like, literally like within maybe five minutes, I caught two fish right off the bat. So I think that's kind of what they're keying in on right now. It's just that elevated presentation. Um, I did catch a couple fish on the jig and then I did catch a couple fish on the net rig. The structure that I'm fishing right now and kind of where they seem to be is a little too snaggy. It's, it's a little too brushy for, for the net rig. Sorry if the audio is really messed up right now, guys. Man, it definitely seems like they're grouped up today. They're not spread out. Uh, I've literally fished two spots today and I think I have like eight or nine fish. So basically, guys, what I'm looking for right now is I'm just looking for these main link points. Uh, I have little brush piles that I can see down there that I'm feeling with the drop shot or with the jig. Uh, that I'm kind of bringing it through, but mostly it's just super, super obvious main lake stuff and nothing super fancy about this. When it gets tough like this, you gotta orient to the bottom. Right now they're they're schooling on shad kind of suspended towards the bottom, but they're not really pushing them up towards the top. And those fish that are chasing shad right now, I can't get to eat. So it's just those fish that are hanging around the outskirts that are hugging on to the bottom that are willing to eat right now. But essentially the colder it gets, the tighter they're gonna get to the bottom. They're gonna start moving out to the deeper points. Like I said, shallow to deep water access and uh, you just gotta fish it. It helps having a decent graph to kind of see them down there, but really all you need to know is depth. If you can go down there and, and know like, hey, I'm catching them in 20 feet, anywhere you go, as long as it's like a main lake point or real obvious main lake, deep shallow water to deep water structure, you can pretty much go there at 20 foot and catch those same fish. So right now I have pulled myself off about, I'm sitting in 29.4 feet and I'm casting up for the probably like 15 and I'm getting bit in around 20 foot. So it's all about boat positioning. If you have spot lock, it really helps out. If you don't, uh, just man that foot pedal, you know, drift a little bit, make a couple passes. I've been sitting on the spot for probably like 30 minutes now, and I got bit right away when I rolled up, so I knew there was fish here. I'm seeing shad all over, so it just kind of took me to figure out what, what they're eating over here, and as soon as I switched over, they started biting, so <laughs> honestly, I, I, I love cold weather fishing. I love fishing around in the winter. Uh, just because you have to figure it out in the summer in the springtime you kind of just go fish you can power fish Which is really fun, but in the winter time you got to go figure out and actually fish So I think I got a little decent pattern here 
I mean, drop shot's not always the most fun to throw, but I threw a couple different baits in there. They wanted nothing about it. And then I flip over, throw the drop shot, and like in the first cast to get a fish, throw it back over. So two casts in a row, back to back fish in the same depth. So obviously, obviously something's going on there, but whew, I guess I'm gonna rig up another worm. I've shredded through about two now. I'll show you guys kind of what rig I'm working with right now and how I set it up. Okay, so here's my drop shot set up here. So I got a little straight shank Gawangatsu hook there. And I tied a little keeper on there because I'm, I'm wanting to rig it up weedless, like a Texas style. Usually I'll just nose hook them, but on this particular one, I wanted it weedless because I am fishing a lot, around a lot of brush. I got a little quarter ounce drop shot weight just to get down and I'm getting inside that brush or staying on the bottom. Like I said, I'm fishing out in 30 feet right now, so it's pretty deep. I want to be able to feel that bottom. And I have about probably like a, probably maybe like a 13, 14 inch leader right here uh, from my hook, which is just to elevate it off the bottom a little bit more. As far as the worm goes, I'm throwing a little mm3 robo worm taking a little bit of this spike it dip and glow dipping the tail in there setting it up and it's good to go man so that's what they're eating on right now I actually just died my my finger good start <laughs> but we're gonna get the cast back in there because obviously they're fired up there's tons of shad below me here i'm just picking off these fish that are sitting on the outside so let's get to fishing okay let's try this again here first cast back in there and freaking got tangled up so Yep, there's another fish. See, that feels, that's a better fish too. Oh yeah, that's a good fish there, folks. Woo, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Two and a half. That felt kind of weird. All right, woo -hoo. So I was talking about right there, man. The GoPro kind of cut half in, halfway in between that bite. But, oh, yes. Man, that's a good fish. Two and a quarter, probably. Thank you, buddy. Here we go. Thank you, buddy. Pretty girl. Oh, you're pissed off. Be ready to go. Literally like the second cast back over there. First one I threw in there, got stuck on a tree, fired back over there. Not really a bite, just kind of felt weird. And a lot of times in these colder months, you won't feel a bite. A lot of times just weird weight. So honestly, I didn't even know if that was a fish or that brush over there. I just pulled into him and he was there. Headed back off him a little bit here. Oh, this little dude. This little guy. Now you're catching little ones. Jeez. There we go. There's a good one. There we go. Oh, not a big, not a big one, but cranked it. Jeez, buddy. Look at that thing. Ugh. Felt like a good one at first. Maybe a little better. Maybe. Oh yeah. There you go. Little dude, schooling fish. Just had to give him a different presentation there, Daisy Girl. Good, just had to give him a different presentation. Back to back fish. So what's going on right there? So this is the this is the bait I'm throwing right there. I was fishing to the bottom with a drop shot and I wasn't really getting like great bites. I was getting bit here and there, but it wasn't anything great. And I'm looking on my graph and I see all kinds of fish pushed up to like, I don't know, like 20 foot or so, or sorry, not 20 foot, like 10, 15 foot or so, kind of the middle of the water column. So I'm like, well, I'll check a crankbait out there, see if something happens, get it super down there. And uh, yeah, two fish back to back. That is cool. Well, getting bit out here. I mean, I haven't had to move spots very much. It's just kind of figuring out what they want. Might rig up a little crankbait or something like that. Oh, oh, that's a good fish. Oh, lordy. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, he freaking crushed it. Oh, lord. Oh, he's barely hooked. Oh, he's barely hooked. Should I flip him? Oh, he's got two hooks in him now. Oh, there we go. Whew. Best one of the day by far. So I said right there, guys. Right freaking there. Nice fish. Oh. There we go, Daisy. Maybe that's all they wanted. They just wanted that crank way down there. And my graph right here, I know it's kind of messy when the trolley motor turns on, it gets all fuzzy, but you see my down scan, all this right here, that's all shad. And these arches above are all actually bass. They're not sitting below them, they're sitting above them here. You can kind of sit them 
Ah, hold on. Well, let me show you here. You'll be able to see them a little better here. So this big red clump that's coming in, that's all shad. And you see the arcs right above it. So those bass are sitting right above it. I'm pretty sure my crankbait's coming right in the middle. So they're, it's weird, they're kind of suspended in midwater column, but that's what's getting bit. That's what's getting bit, that's a good fish. Okay guys, here's what I'm throwing. I got the Matt Allen River to Sea crankbait there. A Daiwa Tula Type R, 30 pound braid to 14 pound floral, and a glass cranking rod. And that is doing the trick. Oh, I just got hit right there. Speed, speed, stop. Crank, 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 pause, crank, pause. Fast erratic cadence. And that's getting bit. All right, one or two more casts here. I think we're gonna dip out and find another spot here before it gets too dark. That's so sick. That is so freaking cool. It's not a bad one either. Oh my gosh, so sick. Not a big end, but not like a tiny one. Ooh, that gives me so height right there. Hooked in the bottom. Another one, jeez. There you go, Daisy. Ow, ow. Hey guys, woo, on the crank. Oh, straight back up. Man, it's awesome coming out here in like post frontal like this and just figuring out a pattern that felt great freaking doinked it too Whew. alrighty guys so that pretty much wraps up the video nothing super extravagant I just kind of want to come out here in these really crappy conditions and just show you guys that you can catch fish out here you just have to know location and timing and the windows that those fish are gonna be biting uh, and just slow it down you know get towards the bottom catch them there uh, or like in my case today you know they're they're schooling mid water column still kind of finicky for how much shattered down there but maybe that's maybe that's why you know that's just how it is post frontal conditions uh, not great conditions out here when I first rolled up it was windy uh, partly cloudy it was super cold I mean we we're in the 50s today it's a Monday so it's post pressure from the weekend so really just not great conditions to come out here and catch them but we definitely did I mean we caught them Daisy bringing the mojo again just go out find those real obvious main link points shallow water to deep water access and then uh, just go fish it slow guys go drag a drop shot go drag a ned rig small texas rig jig come out here and practice at bartlett bartlett is a great place to come out here and just and practice baits that you're not confident in because more than likely you'll find fish that want to eat those in the winter time it's not about the fish just shutting down and not eating they're always eating it's just finding the fish that are willing to eat so come out here to good old bartlett lake and test out some baits that you're not as confident in and break that ice but with that being said i just wanted to make a short snappy sweet video for you guys and uh, kind of give you some tips and show you what I'm doing out here. Uh, watch the video carefully, you know, go back through it a couple times if you need to see exactly what I'm doing. I kind of touched on what setups that I was throwing there. If you guys have any further questions about them, please leave them down below and I can get back to that. I'm here to help out the community and teach you guys everything that I know so hopefully you guys can grow as fishermen as well. So, with that being said, anything Daisy? Good to go? Yeah, you ready to go home? <laughs> scare you well with that being said guys thank you so much for tuning in to today's video and always i'll see you in the next one